What is going on everybody? Hit pause here with another blueprint tutorial for Unreal Engine 4 and in this tutorial what I'm going to do is uh, create a lock-on system. Something that will basically make it so that you can um, uh, cycle through a bunch of lock-on targets that are within a certain, uh, you know, meet a certain criteria and uh, then like if you click the mouse button or something it will basically, uh, you know, lock your camera to that or, or some something like that so um, I haven't fully fleshed this com concept out quite yet uh, because I'm doing it for a completely different style of project in reality but uh, I'm sure that you guys know how lock on generally works so what I want to do is basically I want to make it so that I can lock on to other characters uh, so that you know like if they're enemies or something just assume they're AI I'm not gonna go I don't have any AI this blue um, this uh, project here has literally nothing in it but the thing I did for the last tutorial where I was showing the delta the delta rotation and we are going to use that in this um, but there's no AI there's nothing in here I mean you can see it, it's it's basically dead in the water you know this, this is just something I'm going to use to to do the tutorials on uh, so I don't you know muck up my own uh, my own uh, stuff so what I want to do is um, basically under character here uh, I want to make like a lock on uh, something that I can see visually so I'm gonna do that first so let's just make a new material I'm not gonna worry too much about um, uh, organization here too 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 much okay so uh, I'm not gonna use any textures what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a uh, sphere I think it's sphere gradient let me um, let me preview that really quick okay yeah that's basically what I want here uh, so I need a color for this guy this is gonna be basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this unlit I know this is out of the window let me throw this up here okay so we want it unlit um, I'm thinking probably additive and the other thing I want to do is I want to actually disable the depth test so that this material draws through the entire world right so I'm gonna need two sphere gradients um, let's see here I need a scalar parameter actually I probably don't need a scalar parameter I could probably just use a you know or a, just a scalar value here so this radius is gonna be I think 1 or 0.1 0.5 I think 0.5 would be the radius from that to that this radius is going to be 0.49 okay and what I'm going to do is uh, subtract so we'll just type subtract here uh, we're going to subtract this from that and let's go ahead and preview that let's see if that's about that's about what I want um, I could throw a power here Pooler. Throw a power here and throw that in there. And then the base exponent could be like 4 or 0.25. I think I got to lower it. Uh, let's go 0.5. So something like that. Kind of get like a ring here. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply this by my. Oh, I always miss it. Wow, laggy. I'm going to multiply this by my color, and my color is going to be something like 10 in the red. And we'll throw that in emissive. So that should uh, go ahead and stop previewing that. That should get blooming, blooming. No, not yet, huh? Probably don't have that post process effect actually active. There we go. So we'll go with something like that, like 50. Okay. All right, so that's good enough. Lock on reticule material is fine. So on my character here, uh, on the components, I'm actually going to kill his light. Uh, actually, I'm going to just make the light much less bright, or maybe 50. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete it. I just did that for shizzles and giggles. So we're going to add a bill material bill and what we want to do is we want to pop this open and we want to 
pick uh, RETI for lock on reticule here. Okay, and you can see there it is, and it draws through everything. Okay, it'll draw over everything because it's got the disabled depth test. And what we want to do is we want to make this size in screen space, which makes it disappear. Uh, one here for the screen space is takes up your entire screen. So we don't want that. We want more like uh, maybe 0.1. You can see that as you get closer, maybe 0.25 in my case here so as you can see it's stays the same size it actually feels like it's getting larger it's an like optical why is it right there let's uh go ahead and put it uh up here on his other head uh let's get rid of the uh grid snap we'll, we'll stick it like right there i could attach it to his head bone or something like that yeah you know, there's no bones in that head all right so that should be good uh, and then the other last thing I want to do is I want to make that hidden in game and we'll compile that so that is now him if I stick him out you can see that that's how big it is but as you get farther away that's probably too big now that I look at it on the screen so we'll fix that really quick uh, which would be actually here so I think the point one was actually a, a decent size it just feels really really puny right here Let's hit G here. Oh, I guess those don't show up because I have it hidden. Um, and then lastly, I want to basically, I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go more like 0 0.4. That's uh, 0.45. And then I'll probably lower this down to more like uh, 15 or something. All right, that should work. Make it a little bit thicker. You can, you know, go into Photoshop or something and make a really nice one. You can animate it so that it spins. You know, if you had a little crosshair or something, it spins, or some magical symbols or something like that. Or you could put something at his feet if you wanted to make him start casting a decal. I mean, you can. There's a million things you could do, but in this case, I just want to keep it simple. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to come here and originally when I had done the um, uh, the last one for showing the uh, how to do the delta rotation thing to look at. I had done it on the uh, level blueprint, um, which is not a good place to do it. Don't don't get me wrong. Uh, it's a terrible place to do it because you would need you would need one for every item in the game. Uh, I think honestly the best place to do this would actually be on this particular object itself. So if this thing. Uh, that way you can place a bunch of them around and each one individually would be tracking that so that that'd be where I would do that uh, definitely not on a level blueprint and I wouldn't do it on the character either because then he again he would have to go through and cycle everything anything that's gonna be like hey I'm gonna be able to look at all of these things or something like that it's best to put it on the thingy itself that way you just as you place a new one it works right so we're gonna go into my character here let's dump let's close off some of this stuff here and I'm gonna go into his graph now I'm gonna do it here on this guy and what I'm going to do is make it so that this is not going to, this is going to be kind of an ability for him. Um, we don't have to worry about ticking or anything like that. We just need to basically get this working. So uh, the first thing I'm going to need is a uh, if I go to my project settings, I need a input for uh, for the lock on here. So action mappings, I've got jump. So I'm going to add a new one, and this is going to be called lock on. Okay, and it's actually going to be uh, the F key is what I'm going to use, okay, uh, and that sh that should be fine. That's pretty much all I need. So now I should be able to come in here and just type lock on, okay, and then boom, there's lock on. So there's kind of a uh, hundred and one ways to do this. Uh, really, you don't have to do it this way. This is just just one way of doing it. So um, the way the method that I'm going to use in quick description is I'm going to trace out in front of me. Um, there, basically to see if I can see anything out in front of me uh, whatever I get I'm going to filter those things down based on a set of criteria in in stages uh, until I finally get my final result and then I'm going to um, do my little action which is basically just going to be turning on this this reticule thing here because again if I if I hit play now you can see that that there's nothing there on the guy okay I'm also going to quickly, this is straight from the, um, 
from the thing, I'm going to go ahead and kill these. Kill those uh, print screens there because I don't need that. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to run a trace. Now the kind of trace that I want to run, I know I don't have a lot of space here, uh, is the multi-sphere trace for objects. Okay, so this puts out a relatively, uh, well, a sphere of any size that I want, uh, shooting out uh, in front of me. Now, to get it in front of me, I basically need to get my location. Okay, so actually, I'll just type get, hit home there, so get actor location. Okay, I also want to get his forward vector. And my start position is going to be my own location. Okay, uh, I want to take the forward vector and I want to multiply that by a float value. Okay, because this is kind of a normalized vector here. And I want to say, this is kind of like in units, how far in front of me do I want to do it? I'll do like 600 units in front of me. And then basically, ooh, A is get, huh? So now what I want to do is I want to add this vector plus vector to my own damn self and that should give me my endpoint and let's make the radius something like uh, 50 for now just uh, I'll keep it small um, now the actor the object types here uh, you might be tempted to come out here or make it that a variable and go set that here but you can actually just like I would drag it down here and say make array and what's cool is you can say hey I want to trace for pawns uh, let me add a pin I want to trace for world dynamic let me add a pin I want to trace for all these different things Okay, these are the only things that you can trace for, static, dynamic, pawn. When you're doing for objects, when you're doing it uh, for other stuff, you can, um, like when you're doing the, the channel, by channel, you can do visibility and camera and things like that. But in this case, we're just doing objects. So we just want to get all the objects uh, that are here. Now, um, if this were being ran on the player controller, what you would want to do is get, uh, get the controlled pawn. Uh, so let's, I'll just say... Uh, get a reference to self again. So if this was on the player controller, this would not be self. This would be get um, get controlled pawn. And then what you would do is you would say make array here, okay? And then you would jab that into here for actors to ignore. Now I don't need to do that because I'm actually running it on myself. So I just need to say ignore self here. But like I said, if it was the if you are doing this on the player controller, just keep in mind that the player controller is not the character so if you don't do this you can run into the issue of um, it hitting the actual pawn that's being controlled so again this would need to be controlled pawn if you were doing that but in this case I don't need to do that let's go ahead and draw this for the duration okay just so that we can um, confirm that this trace is pointing out in front of us and that everything's gonna work so we'll hit compile and we'll test this I like to test everything in phases Okay, so we hit F and you can see now if I shoot it over here. Okay, so his forward vector is not working, as you can see. Okay, so I screwed that up. Okay, and the reason is is because I'm getting a forward vector on in rotation of nothing. So Basically what I want to do is let's go ahead and actually get a reference to self and then we'll do the forward vector here. Okay, we'll stick that in there. We'll compile that. We'll hit play. Okay, so there we go. Now you can see I can trace off of him. However, if I look this way, it's still tracing that way. Okay, so what in, in reality, what I actually want to do is I want to trace that off of my camera. Okay, so what is the camera called? It's called the follow camera. So we want to basically say get follow camera, which is off the screen, but it was down at the bottom. It's just get follow camera. Okay, and what I think I want to do is let's try getting the forward vector from this. Um, so I basically need to do that again. Get forward vector. And let's just see how it works like this. We may need to do something a little bit different. Again, I haven't done it on this type of character. My character that I'm playing, doing it on is completely different than the way this third player guy works. 
Okay, so now I'm basically tracing off of my camera. Doesn't matter where. So if I go to like want to do right into the corner, kind of need to look up a little bit. Okay. Feels like it's kind of pointing down a little bit from where I'm actually looking, but I think that's just because of the weird viewport that I have going on here. So what I actually think I really want to do, because I don't like the ability to go like this and basically trace right down into the ground, that's not cool, right? So let's um, let's do this instead. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work, but let's try get rotation, uh, get world rotation here. Let's break this. Let's break that, and then let's make rotation make rot and let's just use the yaw and then, then we'll get the forward vector off of that okay now it doesn't matter if I look up or down okay it's gonna basically go from where my I'm only looking here okay so I think that's a little bit better that feels better so let's just uh, hair bit of cleanup as we go try to stay organized here I like to stack you guys don't have to do that I know a lot of people don't do this um, but I found that the, doing it this way helps me to see a little bit more clear what's together so it just goes up the chain like that uh, if you don't like these swirly splines um, there is a way to edit that uh, if you go to editor preferences and if you go to uh, the I believe graph editors and scroll this all the way down under splines you can say here uh, like if I come here and I say uh, let's show this behind it. Let's say you watch these splines here. If I turn this to like 300, um, where this 300. Actually, these are backward splines, by the way. So you can see here backward spline horizontal. So if I go like 50, you can see that they they shrink. Um, these right here, like say I go like you know 5,000 or something, or 500,000, five bazillion. I guess maybe that's just out of range. 5,000. You can get these things to get all crazy. <clears throat> for instance like if I take this one from 50 and go to 5,000 you can see that they can go crazy I think that they limited it before they didn't actually have that but I like to do it kind of like that so they're not I don't get all this swirly swirly noise going on and uh, in this one you want to say set as default okie dokie and boom alright so now we're getting a decent uh, thing here let's go ahead and increase this radius here and I pretty much do not need to see this anymore because I know that it's working. Again, we are tracing for pawns. Actually, here, let me go ahead and show um, show this again so we can confirm that it is, in fact... Okay, it looks like it's hitting myself. It's hitting him, though. I think kind of feels like it's hitting him but then again maybe it's not let me shrink the uh, size again real quick let's try like 250 yeah that looks like it hit him yeah it's hitting him so everywhere you see that red box basically hits him shouldn't hit myself just trying to look for red boxes turn the camera in all directions and keep spamming it yeah no we're not hitting ourselves anywhere so okay I think we're good all right so now what we want to do is we need a couple of variables here all right so I'm gonna make a new variable and what I need is a max lock on range here because I need to figure out how far away something is even though I am only tracing out so far I still kinda want I still kinda like to have this because it is a good thing to just kinda keep in store 
and we have to compile. I kind of don't like that you have to compile to set the default value, but I suppose that's okay. Um, I'll say how far I'm, I'm tracing out 600. I'll say that the max lock on range is a um, thousand here, just just to say. So for, with a 250 radius, we have a um, we're going out to 600. So if essentially we're checking out 850 units in front of us, right? Because we're uh, we got this radius here which is going to end at 600 so we add this to that so this would be your total distance so if I want to actually go to a thousand I'll say 250 which means that I need to check out to 750 in front of me and that would be pretty much equivalent to a thousand okay and then what we're gonna do is we need to go through these things and we need to kind of uh, do a little bit of criteria because the thing is is that if you look here if I hit play and I hit F if you look at the sphere here you can see that I'm actually able to see behind myself because of the way that the radius of the sphere is now one fix would be to hey let me start it out in front of myself that radius uh, but then like thing like because this is a sphere you can actually run into a little bit of, of trouble there so what this is where I basically like to to use some of the um, other tricks so what we need to do is we need to say hey for each for each of these things this is where we're gonna start going through and uh, doing the uh, the filtering here okay we need to break the hit result break the hit result and our first check is going to be is it valid now it should be but we're going to do it anyway just for safety purposes so if it's not valid we are just going to move on okay so if it is valid we're going to do do the next thing now our next check is we're going to cast to I think uh, we'll cast to character Okay, because all, all these my characters and stuff should all be based on character. Now, all the different types of things that you need to be able to lock onto, um, this is kind of what you want to cast it to. So, for in in general, I don't know, you know, your game, your game is your game. I don't have any idea what you guys are doing, but in general, for me, what I tend to do is all of the characters tend to extend from the character class. That's not always the case for everybody but in my case it is true so I'm casting to character if there were multiple types what you would do is say hey cast the character do my thing uh, if it failed try casting to my other type do my thing things like that okay so like cast the character cast the pawn derp 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 okay probably could cast a pawn too it, it doesn't really make a difference in my case so once it casts the character what I want to do is I want to get his location Okay. I want to get actor location with nothing selected. So that's myself. Okay. I want to find that look at rotation. Just basically I want to see if he's in front of me. Okay. With nothing selected, I want to get actor rotation. Go ahead and delta this. Okay, and then we'll run our checks here. Now it should, you know, kind of only pick up certain things, but we we do want to have this kind of check anyway. I, I liked it. I like the check. So we're gonna break the break the rot. This is basically doing the same thing that I had done in the other one. Okay, we want to get the ABS here, and we'll dupe that. Okay, and we'll dupe that. And now what I want is a promote to variable here. This is going to be lock on. This is going to be max lock angle. Okay, we'll compile that. And I'm going to make this about 40 degrees. Okay. So we check both of these. Then we're going to throw an and, and boolean here. Okay, just hold B and click for a branch. 
the only part I don't like. You get this huge thing going across here. Okay, so if they're both less than that, then what we're going to do is we're going to now make a new variable here. This is going to be called uh, lock target list. Okay, and this lock target list is going to be of type character. And we're going to make it an array. Okay, so we're going to bring this out and we're going to say add. Okay, but before we do that, what we want to do is we want to see if we already have this. So we'll bring this out again and we'll say contains item. Okay, and we branch that. So if we pass this check, Let's do our next check if it contains this item. If it does, I don't need to add it again because I'll get a duplicate of him. Okay, and now we definitely need to reroute over to here because we're coming all the way from here. So we just come to about right here and let go and type RER, -E and that gives you the reroute node. So we want character reference. Oh, up, 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 up. That's actually got to be this guy. So actually what I'll do is let go right there. Uh, reroute node. And we'll plug that in there. Oh, okay, so that became an actor reroute node. And then that's the only thing that can go in there. I don't like that, but oh, not going to be a complainer. So this will hook in now to there and there. Okay. So remember, we're what we're checking is our hit actor, right? So this is everything. So we go through and we check all of these guys here. So if it contains it, we're going to add it. Okay. Uh, if we can actually, if it's within our view, we're going to check through and see. Okay. It's important uh, to do this, I think. Uh, it's not entirely necessary because your trace uh, works, but remember, we're not clearing the list every time. This is a little bit more complex than that because we're actually going through and we want to be able to cycle through all of our targets, right? So if you hit, if you keep hitting F, it should cycle through all of the targets based on uh, proximity to your character. Then you can do other checks too. Uh, based on which is the closest to the center of your screen so that would start first and then it would come out to the next one so it would use both distance and the proximity to the middle of your screen to filter uh, the order of how things go but in this case we're gonna just uh, we're just gonna do it based on uh, just just a simple filter it just kinda randomly spam through them uh, based on distance actually okay so We've done our first check for getting all of them in our list, all right? And I think I might end it here. Let's, um, after this here, let's just go ahead and confirm by throwing a print string. And what we'll do is we'll just type name, uh, home, uh, get display name here and so for each of these we will get a display name so we come here we hit play my character and it doesn't happen again because he's already in the list so I can keep spamming it on him I already know he's one of my lock on targets right okay so this will make relatively, this will be a little bit different should we have, say, come on, where are you? A few of these guys here. Okay, so there was four of them there, but if I keep hitting it, they don't get added anymore. Okay. They're basically in my 
in my list now. Okay, and that's from the magic of the contains item here. This is a very handy thing uh, to be able to do so that you don't end up. If I didn't do this, first time I've got four, the next time I've got, I think I end up with. Oh, I still actually. Did I do that right? Doesn't seem to actually be adding them if they're already in there. That's interesting. That's interesting. I like that, but then again, I kind of don't. Because this should be straight up. Hey, keep adding it. Like if I spam, this should. The normal array, it's like, hey, you know, add my strings. But in this case, yeah, it's only adding. It's only adding them the one time anyway. So I guess it does its own safety check, but I'm going to keep this in here anyway because this would be the way I would program this in code. I would make sure that I'm not double adding. Okay. I could also print the length or something, but I'm going to let it end this part here. So the first, like I said, the first thing that we're doing is we've got the action, we run a trace, four pawns, we should ignore ourselves. We may want to do, get a reference to self here and throw that in there anyway. We need to make an array. I do feel like every once in a while I'm pinging off myself and I don't like that at all. Even though this is here, that's there, this doesn't make any sense, but I, it is pinging off myself. I, I've seen it once or twice. Uh, so we check the hit actor, we make sure it's valid, we check if it can cast, if not we don't care about him. Uh, then we go ahead and we look at whether or not he's in our view here, which is doing the delta rotation off a look at. Then if that's true we move forward, if it doesn't contain it we add it, and then we print all the ones we added which we don't need this shies anymore so that's where we are at right now we are officially just grabbing a list of everything that we saw okay so I'll see you guys in the next part